Okay, so today we're going to start one of my favorite books of all time. It's called Good Omens, um, The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Agnes Meadow Witch. This is just a wonderful book, and there's a beautiful TV series on Amazon Prime Video um, that goes along with it, and I just think it's really cool, so we're going to start it. Okay, this is the foreword. People say, what is it like writing good omens? And we say, we were just a couple of guys, okay? We still are. It was a summer job. We had a great time doing it. We split the money in half, and we swore never to do it again. We didn't think it was important. And in a way, it still isn't. Good Omens was written by two people who at the time were not at all well-known, except by the people who already knew them. They weren't even certain it would sell. They certainly didn't know they were going to write the most repaired book in the world. Believe us, we have signed a delightfully large number of paperbacks that have been dropped in the bath, gone a worrying brown color, got repaired with sticky tape and string, and in one case consisted entirely of loose pages in, in a plastic bag. On the other hand, there was the guy who'd had a special box made up of walnut and silver, and silver filigree with the paperback nestling inside on black velvet. There were civil, silver ruins on the lid. We didn't ask. Etiquette tip. It's okay, more or less, to ask an author to sign your arm, but not good manners to then nip around to the tattoo parlor next door and return half an hour later to show them the inflamed result. We didn't know we'd do some signing tours that would be weird, even by our generous standards, talking about humor in 15-second bursts in between news flashes about the horrific hostage situation down at the local Burger King, being interviewed by an ill-prepared New York radio presenter who hadn't gotten the message that Good Omens was a work of what we in the trade call fiction, and getting a stern pre-interview warning about swearing from the diminutive director of protocol of a public service radio station because you English use bad language all the time. In fact, neither of us swear much, especially not on the radio, but for the next hour we found ourselves automatically speaking in very short, carefully scanned sentences while avoiding each other's eyes. And then there were the readers. God bless them. We must have signed hundreds of thousands of copies for them by now. The books are often well read to the point of physical disintegration. If we run across a shiny new copy, it's usually because the owner's previous five have been stolen by friends, struck by lightning, or eaten by giant termites in Sumatra. You have been warned. Oh, and we understand there's a copy in the Vatican Library. It'd be nice to think so. It's been fun. And it continues. Good Omens. In the beginning. It was a nice day. All the days had been nice. There had been rather more than seven of them so far, and rain hadn't been invented yet. But clouds massing east of Eden suggested that the first thunderstorm was on its way, and it was going to be a big one. The angel of the eastern gate put his wings over his head to shoot himself from the first drops. I'm sorry, he said politely. What was it you were saying? I said that one went down like a lead balloon, said the serpent. Oh, yes, said the angel whose name was Zarephel. I think it was a bit of an overreaction, to be honest, said the serpent. I mean, first offense and everything. I can't see what's so bad about knowing the difference between good and evil anyway. It must be bad, reasoned Aziraphale in the slightly concerned tones of one who can't see it either and is worrying about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been involved. They just say, get up there and make some trouble, said the serpent, whose name was Crawley, although he was thinking of changing it by now. Crawley, he decided, was not him. Yes, but you're a demon. I'm not sure it's actually possible for you to do good, said Azarephel. It's down to your basic, you know, nature. Nothing personal, you understand. You've got to admit it's a bit of a pantomime, though, said Crawley. I mean, pointing out the tree and saying, don't touch in big letters. Not very subtle, is it? I mean, why not paint it on top of a high mountain or a long way off? Makes you wonder what he's really planning. Best not to speculate, really, said Aziraphale. You can't second guess inevitability. Ineffability, I always say. There's right and there's wrong. If you do wrong, when you're told to do right, you deserve to be punished. Er, they sat in an embarrassed silence, watching the raindrops bruise the first flowers. Eventually, Crawley said, Didn't you have a flaming sword? Er, said the angel. A guilty expression passed across his face and then came back and camped there. 
You did, didn't you? said Crawley. It flamed like anything. Er, uh, well, it looked very impressive, I thought. Yes, but, well, lost it, have you? Oh, no, not exactly lost, more. Well, Erzerophel looked wretched. You must, if you must know, he said, a trifle testily, I gave it away. Crawley stared up at him. Well, I had to, said the angel, rubbing his hands distractedly. They look so cold, poor things, and she was expecting already, and with the vicious animals out there and the storm coming up, I thought, well, where's the harm? So I just said, look, if you come back, there's going to be an almighty row, but you might be needing the sword. So here it is. Don't bother to thank me. Just do everyone a big favor and don't let the sun go down on you here. He gave Crawley a worried grin. That was the best course, wasn't it? I'm not sure it's actually possible for you to do evil, said Crawley sarcastically. Azaraphale didn't notice the tone. Oh, I do hope so, he said. I really do hope so. It's been worrying me all afternoon. They watched the rain for a while. Funny thing is, said Crawley, I keep wondering whether the apple thing wasn't the right thing to do as well. A demon can get into real trouble doing the right thing, he nudged the angel. Funny if we both got it wrong, eh? Funny if I did the good thing and you did the bad one, eh? Not really, said Aziraphale. Crawley looked at the rain. No, he said, sobering up. I suppose not. Slate black curtains tumbled over Eden. Thunder growled among the hills. The animals, freshly named, cowered from the storm. Far away in the dripping woods, something bright and fiery flicked among the trees. It was going to be a dark and stormy night. Good Omens, a narrative of certain events occurring in the last 11 years of human history, in strict accordance, as shall be sown with the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, compiled and edited with footnotes of an educational nature and precepts for the wise by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Dram Dramatis Personae, Supernatural Beings, God is God. Metatron is the voice of God. Aziraphel is an angel and part-time rare book dealer. Satan is a fallen angel and the adversary. Beelzebub, a likewise fallen angel and prince of hell. Hoster, a fallen angel and duke of hell. Liger, likewise a fallen angel and duke of hell. Crowley, Crowley, sorry, an angel who did not so much as fall as saunter vaguely downwards. Apocalyptic horse persons, death is death. War is war, famine is famine, pollution is pollution. Humans, thou shall not commit adultery, Persifer. Pulsifer, a witch finder, Agnes Nutter, a prophetess, Newton Pulsifer, wages clerk and witch finding private, and aneth and oh my god, anathema device, practical occultist and professional descendant, Shadwell, witch finder sergeant, Madam Tracy, painted Jelzebub, mornings only, Thursdays by arrangement, and medium. Sister Mary Loquacious, a satanic nun of the Chattering Order of St. Beryllie. Mr. Young, a father. Mr. Tyler, a chairman of a residence association. A delivery man. Them. Adam, an antichrist. Pepper, a girl. Winsley Dale, a boy. Brian, a boy. Full chorus of Tibetans, aliens, Americans, <laughs> Athelians, and other rare and strange creatures of the last days. And dog, satanical hellhound and cat warrior.